Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Jingo by Terry Pratchett. So this is one of his Discworld novels, it's one of the City Watch books. And I've kind of been slowly reading through these for the various re-readathon prompts. I can't even tell you now what the prompt for April is, but I somehow made it relate back to Jingo. And so yeah, I've been rereading it via audiobook because I do all of my rereads via audio. I've been taking a few notes as I went along, and so I want to share some of them with you today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my notes and chat about them, and then at the end I'll give you my overall thoughts and a rating. Okay, so uh, this is basically about a war that happens between Ankh Morpork and Clatch. Uh, a lost city kind of comes back out of the ground, and there's a, a big fight over who gets to have possession of it. I guess and we get this line. The lost city almost sidled back, like a cat who's gone away for a few days and knows that its owners have missed it. I, I don't, I don't know, man. He's doing quite a, <laughs> quite. A, I don't know how I feel about him doing this accent. At a time, books are unimportant at this time. We demand you release my countrymen now. All right, so we get a moment where Sam Vimes lights a match on Detritus. So Detritus is the troll, and he lights a match off him, and um, the troll's like, "No bother." It was quite a good impression, actually, of the narrator doing the troll voice. Uh, there was also the, a ship called the Milka was referenced, and I think that was in Discworld Noir, which was a computer game based on the Discworld. Which I used to play back in the day, it was awesome. There's uh, a lot of great stuff on, like, Clatchy and integration into Ankh Morpork as well, and then, like, your sort of working class racism, so people calling them Johnny Foreigner and saying that curries aren't more porkian and stuff. Uh, then there's a moment where the cops are watching someone paint Pride of Ankh Morpork on the side of a ship and they're waiting for the entertainment value when he realises that he's missed the E. Uh, and then there's <laughs> there was a sailor who got press ganged by farmers and he got drunk, uh, fell asleep and woke up lashed to a plough, which I thought was very Pratchett. Willikens the butler, uh, Vimes' butler. Uh, quits to go and join the army as well to fight in this war. I think there is actually a scene later on that I remember coming up where he meets Vimes again on the battlefield and he's nuts, so we'll see. Then we have uh, Leonard of Quirm, he's like the Discworld's Leonardo da Vinci and in this he's uh, basically being paralleled with Arthur Nobel, so he's invented these high explosives to move those pesky mountains and obviously Lord Vetinari, who's the guy who runs the city, the patrician, uh, he's starting to think of the military applications of these. There was a character, they said, uh, he's not an assassin, he just kills people. He can't read or write. So, because he's not educated, he can't get membership into the Assassin's Guild and be an actual assassin. And uh, Detritus, Detritus the Troll, is probably one of my favourite characters. So there's this exchange between Vimes and Detritus. It's probably two of my favourite characters in the whole of Discworld. So Vimes says, were you planning on shooting these people in cold blood? And then Detritus replies, no sir, just a warning shot in the head, sir. And then uh, there's just a mention there's this fire and Vimes says Sybil's got some wonderful ointment for burns and that's because Sybil runs a dragon sanctuary. I just think these little tiny details, they're great. Alright, so some more bits from Jingo. So we get a bit where, because they're out in the, d the desert and Detritus is a troll and his brain is like made out of silicon or whatever. And it functions best when it's kept cold. There's actually a scene in a previous book where they go into like a meat storage warehouse and it's all refrigerated. So he becomes super intelligent. But here, because he's in the desert, his brain starts to melt and he gets even dumber, which is saying a lot for a troll. All right, change of background, I guess, because I've moved around in my house a little bit. And this is the only thing I can find that works. I've just got a few more bits from Pratchett. So there's this really creepy bit at the end where the disorganizer, which is what... Vimes kind of uses to remind him of his uh, meetings. It goes into a parallel timeline and towards the end it's reeling off the names of all of the city watch officers who died. And then there's a quote as well, some men will try to turn anything into a weapon. So yeah, overall I really enjoyed this reread of Jingo. I didn't realise I'd reread it as many times and yeah, the city watch books are just fantastic. I gave it a pretty solid 4.5 out of 5 and would definitely recommend it. But I would say just read the city watch books in order if you can. So there we have it, that's what I made of Jingo. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.